welcome to Art with Emily. My name is Emily. Today I will be helping you accomplish a beautiful birch tree forest sunset painting, which sounds tricky, but it's not. <laughs> I've got a lot of tricks to show you today. Um, so I am going to get started really quick, but first I thought maybe you'd like to learn a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Emily. I am an elementary school teacher. I love painting and incorporating art into my classroom, and I really believe that art is for everyone. You don't have to have special skills, you need no experience, you just have to have uh, an open attitude, a positive attitude, and a willingness to maybe get a little bit messy, just a little bit. Art is a way for me to relax, to kind of leave my day behind me, and to make something out of nothing, which is always really satisfying. So those are some of the reasons that I love art. I hope that you will fall in love with painting as well or maybe just have a fun afternoon with me. So today we are going to paint on canvas. You could definitely do this project on wood or on a different surface. Just be mindful of surface preparation. So today because we're using canvas our surface preparation will be gesso. So white gesso is here. And that we're going to paint all over the whole canvas and prepare it for acrylic paint. That's the first step. So sometimes I like to do this step the day before I want to paint. And this way you don't have to wait around for it to dry. It's also okay just to take a few hours off and give her some time. So I'm just going to dip my paintbrush in the gesso. Um, if you're sharing, you could definitely pour it into a, another container. That would be fine. And then I like to just dab off the extra on the edge with my paintbrush. And then I'm going to make long straight lines to cover my canvas. So I'm going to start at the top. I'm going to go across the top and paint it. Also, be mindful to get the edges. Sometimes people forget to paint on the edges. And then at the end, it just looks a little bit less professional. Not that any of us are professionals here, but it's nice to be able to fake it a little. So I like to paint the edges, just so I don't forget. I'll do that first, all the way top to bottom. And you'll see how the texture changes a little bit on there. It's a little tricky to see because it's white, um, but you'll see it on your own, how it makes kind of a shiny surface. And that looks a little bit different than your canvas surface. So you'll see the places that you've painted. Just clean up my edges and make sure everything is really smooth. There's no lumps or bumps because this will be my painting surface. Awesome. Awesome. And then I'm going to let that dry. But I just have water in a little cup and I like to clean those brushes right away so they don't end up hard and crunchy because <laughs> that's no fun. Awesome. And now I'm going to let my gesso dry a little while and we'll come back for some painting. Okay, now we have given some time to our canvas to dry and hopefully a couple hours, if not overnight, that's probably the best. And we are going to move on to our next step, which is tape. So I have some masking tape, painter's tape here. The green stuff or the blue stuff usually works the best. And then I also have some scissors to help me out. So now I can decide if I want my painting to be portrait or landscape. And I think I'm gonna make mine a landscape painting today. So I'm gonna take some tape in my canvas and I'm going to tape off uh, some kind of birch tree shadows. So the first thing I need to do is just tape off a line down the middle. So I'll take some tape and I'll tape it down. There is no right way or wrong way to make trees. You can just do one, you could do five, you can do three, whatever works for you. So I'm gonna start here with kind of a straight line down the middle. Important to rub it down on the edges and press down all the way across so that you don't end up with any paint seeping through. So that's a good base. I'm gonna do another one. I think I'm gonna do two trees, maybe three trees on this one. So I'll do one there, one over here, 
down. So yeah, right around the edges. I like to go all the way to the edges because I find it gives a cleaner look. Uh, but that's up to you, what you like. And then I'm going to do one that I'm going to cut on an angle at the top. Have a little pointy edge. And I'm going to stick that one right here in the middle. So this one's only gonna go about halfway. It's a little baby tree, or maybe it got cut down. I don't know. Okay, so now we have the main tree trunks, and now we're gonna add some details. So this part you can make as simple or as complicated as you like. I like to use scissors and cut out different kinds of branch shapes. So they don't have to be complicated. I like just little triangle shapes like this. And then you're going to stick them over top of your tape lines to make it look like branches. So I'm just going to repeat this many times until I'm satisfied with how it looks. I recommend a little bigger than you want to go because taking them off when they're really small can be quite tricky. So it's something to think about. So I'm going to tape off some branches and use the same strategy of like rubbing my nails or something hard along the edge to be sure that it's grabbing down onto that canvas. Oops, I have a little more here I can use. There we go. You're also welcome just to rip it if you like that kind of jagged texture look. That works too. So what the tape is doing here is it's going to block off all those spots in that nice, clean, white gesso color. And then we can paint the background right over top and make a mess, and it's totally fine, which is really cool. There we go. Like I said, you're welcome to make really complicated stuff here. You can make beautiful, intricate branches if you have the time and the energy, and you don't mind peeling off all the tiny stuff at the end. But for me, I'm just going to go simple today. And if you don't like it, try it out. Stick it on. If you don't like it, just take it off. There's no problem. That's the best part about art. Is that you can follow a plan, but in the end, it's really up to you on how you want it to look. And there's no right and wrong answer there. Although, I know in art, we're often our own worst critics. So with that in mind, don't be too hard on yourself. Be nice to yourself. <laughs> or it's supposed to be fun. And we'll put her hmm, maybe up here. Yeah, so that's my look. This is my, my birch tree forest. So the next step is I'm just going to make sure that I don't have any bumps in my tape. So I'm going to go through all those edges really thoroughly again. Rub my nail down on it. You could also use like a hard surface like a paintbrush if that's easier. Just to make sure it's all good and stuck. When using painter's tape, be mindful that you're not going to leave it on for like weeks and weeks, but maybe like a week or so is enough time before you can take it off, just so it doesn't get too stuck to your canvas and it's easy to peel away. Okay, now it's time for us to do some painting. So I'll move my tape and my scissors aside. And I've prepared a palette today using aluminum foil and just a dinner plate. I didn't have a palette with me. So here I'll show you. Today I have acrylic paints all acrylics. You're welcome to do this with watercolor if you prefer, um, but today I'm going to use acrylics, just acrylic, nothing different. So I have black, blue, red, yellow, and white on my plate, and I'm going to show you how we can mix them to make kind of a, a sky effect. So I have a selection of brushes with me. I like to choose square flat brushes for this kind of work, so you'll see they are, most of them are flat and square, just in different sizes. Here's an angled brush just for a different effect. And oh, a teeny tiny little liner brush, which sometimes makes nice details. So those are my choices today. You could do this with any kinds of brushes. 
You could even do this just like with your hands. You don't even need brushes if you don't want, if you're into a more sensory experience. So today we are going to use some different colors. We're going to make a sky effect. So first I'm going to start by loading up my brush half with white and half with blue. So you'll see half my paintbrush is white and half my paintbrush is blue. Oh yeah, just like that. And then I'm gonna just start right on top of all my tape, right over top of everything. I'm gonna start blending it out like a sky. So you'll see how the colors mix together naturally with my brush. You'll notice that my paintbrush is going back and forth on the same, in the same way. So I'm gonna go back and forth. I'm even gonna do the tops and the edges as I go just adds a little bit more of a professional look when you're finished to have the edges of the canvas done too. And we're going to keep layering until it makes an effect that you like. Here's some red in here. Oh yeah, I like that. That looks great, like a pop of color. Oh yeah. You'll notice I'm using a little bit of water, not too much, just a little, to blend those colors together. So at the, the places where the red and yellow meet, I'm going to add a touch more water to blend them together. So it's not such a harsh, straight line. And let's do a little bit of red and a little bit of blue at the bottom, make it a little deeper. Awesome. Right up to the tape lines, you'll notice I'm going right over top of the trees here. So you can see right over top. That allows the, the paint to get right close to the edges and when you take the tape off, it will have a really clean, beautiful effect. I'm just going to add a little more red here. I like painting without too much of a plan, personally. So I think it allows for more magic to kind of happen where you don't expect it. Some people prefer a paint by numbers approach. And for that, you could definitely do like blue, yellow, red, and just write it out and draw yourself with pencil lines. That is also a great idea. It's just not my style, but to each their own. Beautiful. Okay, now we'll put it back the right way. Leave it for a moment there to rest. And you know what? I like Oh, acrylics is that you can go right over top. So I'm going to switch it up, use a smaller brush now, and do the same kind of thing. Same colors, different layers. See how that comes up. Let's see. Do some dark around the edges here. Change that blue. If you add just a touch of black into your color, you're going to just make that a shade darker. Add some depth into your colors and you don't need so many paints then. You can just kind of make them up as you go just by adding a touch of black or a touch of white. A touch of blue will make something cooler and a touch of red will make something a little warmer. So that depends, I guess, on the look you're going for. So no special method to the madness, just back and forth different colors as much as you like. And then maybe let's add some dark to the bottom. And we'll do the same thing at the top. Just add some darkness. Keep that bright pop in the middle. Because that looks beautiful and I'm a really big fan of that. And a little bit of water to kind of clean it up if you've got some weird, weird brush strokes showing up. And you'll see with just a few colors, we actually created quite a rainbow which is pretty cool. You don't need a lot to make a lot. We just started with white, blue, like primary, yellow, red, and black, and made kind of a few. I think it looks good right now. So I'm gonna give it some time, maybe an hour, a couple hours, let it dry off, and then I'll show you how to move on with the next step. Okay, now I've given it some time to dry. Now I'm going to add some details to the sky. I have a tiny brush. I'll put some white paint in there. White. And now I'm going to draw some straight lines or wiggly lines across the top, right over the trees. Right over the trees. Yeah. It 
does not have to be beautiful or even or straight. The weirder, the better, honestly. Yeah, it's good if some spots are a little bit more obvious than others. Just adding some sky details. Half. I'm gonna add some white lines through. Just add some effect. And then you can take that same brush and add some clouds into some of those spots. So you're gonna just add kind of a dot, dot, dot effect. Dot, 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 dot. Right over the trees, because that part will come off if you remember. Awesome. Some people like to add a touch of blue into their clouds, and I think that can look really nice. Just like dot, 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 right in with that wet white paint. Dot, dot, dot. So let's say I don't like that cloud, and I don't want to keep it there. I want to change it. That's okay. I can take a paintbrush, put some color on it. Let's do red and yellow, and a little bit of white there. And we're going to just paint right over it. No problem at all. There's always an opportunity to fix. So if something is bugging you, fix it, change it, no problem. And then you can leave it to dry once again. This one we're gonna let dry all the way 100% because our next step is taking off tape. Okay, now I've given my painting plenty of time to dry and now it's time for me to take off the tape. This is my favorite part. So you may choose to use an X-Acto knife to help you get the tape edges up, or you can use your fingernails. I like to start with the back where you can see the tape, and I'll start by pulling gently on one of the tree trunks. Nice, nice, awesome. And we've got our trees in the sunset. You could leave it like this. However, I have a trick to show you that you might like, just to add some nice clean lines. So instead of using a fine tip brush, which you definitely can use if that's your preferred method, you could use that teeny tiny brush and black paint and line them. But I prefer to use a Sharpie marker, it's kind of a cool trick, and draw out my details. So I'll show you on one of them here. Just tracing on the edges, right over those painted bumpy lines so you can't even see them. And we're gonna do that all over the whole thing. So you'll see me trace the lines of the edges. Okay, once you've done the outline like this, we're gonna draw in some little birch tree bark stripes. I don't know what they're called. You know what I mean. They're like little lines in the birch trees. This does not have to be perfect at all. I just like to draw a different length of lines horizontally across and vertically on the branches. That just gives it a cool textured effect. the final step. Now we are going to seal our painting so that it doesn't get wrecked um, and it stays beautiful for as long as possible. But this is called Mod Podge. I like to use this when I'm using mixed media art. Um, for example, we use Sharpie and acrylic paint and those both react differently to different types of sealants. So an acrylic varnish might not be your best choice here. I would go for something like this. So now we're going to take our big fat flat brush and we're gonna cover the whole thing with sealant. Take some on your paintbrush, you can load it up on both sides and take a little extra off on the edge. Oh, it's hard to see. I just have it on another plate with tin foil here. And then we're gonna paint over the whole thing. So I'm gonna start at the edges and cover it up. And it looks a little bit, uh, I guess kind of like foggy when you paint over it, just shows you where you've painted, and then it will dry nice and clear. Now I'll let it dry for a short time, and I'll show you the finished result.
okay, now we've given our painting lots of time to dry, and it's shiny and clear and dry to the touch, so I can show it off. Here it is, all finished. And I hope that you enjoy painting a birch tree forest sunset painting just like this or totally different. Maybe you'll take away some tips and tricks like using masking tape to keep your negative space negative like the white trees or using a Sharpie to do your fine details instead of a teeny tiny paintbrush uh, just because it's easier and cleaner and quicker. And I hope that you enjoyed this as much as I did. Thank you so much. I had a great time painting with you today and I hope that you make some beautiful art.